Hey everyone, so this is a very cheap way to get a Minecraft proxy if you are self-hosting a Minecraft server by using AWS EC2. The reason I would recommend this is because I have never had any luck successfully setting up a proxy using Cloudflare. I was using TCP Shield, which is a great proxy, however it is very laggy. I was getting 130 ping, but using this AWS proxy I was able to get it down to only 10. I apologize if I sound like crap, I am currently sick. So I have this diagram here just to give you an overview of what we're going to be doing. Let's say you have someone who wants to connect to your Minecraft server. They're going to be putting in mc.hypixel.net and then it's going to be resolving to the AWS proxy that we're going to be creating, which is the IP address. So all they're going to see is this IP address. If you just did straight from free DNS or, you know, mc.hypixel.net straight to your private <coughs> home network address then they would be able to see this by just going into command prompt pinging mc.hypixel.net and you'll see that we have the public facing IP address for Hypixel right there. So what we're going to be doing is we're, we're going to be creating an AWS proxy which is essentially going to go in between um, your private Minecraft server uh, or your home network and the domain name that you have set up. So basically what they're all they're going to be able to see is the AWS IP. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to freedns.afraid.org. Uh, go ahead and set up an account. Go to subdomains on the left over here. We're going to add a subdomain. Under domain, go ahead and click this drop down. And you can choose one of these if you want. I didn't like any of these, so I hit many more available and then shared domain registry. This is going to show you a whole bunch of them that you can choose from. Um, I'm going to choose us.to because this is honestly the most simple and cleanest. You're going to want an A record. Uh, the subdomain is going to be whatever you want it to be. I'm going to stick with Mr. Medicom code since that's probably not taken. There we go. Now this is what it should look like. You're going to be uh, an A record from this pointing to this IP address. So now what we do here. If we don't have the AWS proxy set up, if we go ahead and go to command prompt again and then ping the domain name that we just set up, Mr. Medicom code .us .to, or I'm sorry, the subdomain, not the domain name, you'll see that it resolves to this IP address. So if this was your home network IP address, um, I would not want to give that out to people. So this is what the AWS proxy is going to do. It's going to replace this right here. All right, the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and set up an AWS account. Once you've done that, you're going to want to go to EC2. You can do that by going to services up here and then compute and then EC2. We're just searching it. Go to instances and then launch instance. I'm going to be doing Ubuntu server. If you're comfortable with that, something else, you can choose that. This is what I'm going to be doing for the tutorial. So looking at the instance types that we can have, I just opened up another tab here and went to instance types on the left under EC2. We see that t2.nano, which is eligible for the free tier, which means that for the first 12 months that you opened your AWS account, you are eligible for the free tier. So you can get the t2.nano instance for free for up to 12 months. I'm not going to do that, however, because you can see the network performance here is low to moderate, which may be fine if you don't have a super high traffic Minecraft server, but I would like something with a little bit better performance, especially since this is only going to be acting as a proxy, which, if we go back to our diagram, is literally just forwarding traffic. What I would suggest is going with the T3.nano. You will have to purchase this as it is not part of the free tier, however, you can see the network performance is much better. Also on a side note, before you do launch, we go through and finally launch this instance, I did just want to mention that you will be paying for this instance at the rate that it is listed um, right here. So in this case, the t3.nano, if you're doing Linux, it would be this much per hour. So you would be paying for that the entire time that it is up. For this case, I'm going to be doing the t2.nano just because this is a tutorial. I would highly recommend doing the t3.nano. Something else, if you want to save a lot of money, and what I actually have done on my main account for my Minecraft uh, self-hosted server, is if you go to reserve instances down here and then purchase reserve instance, Type in the t3.no, I'm just going to select that here, and then go ahead and hit search. Put the effective rate um, as the lowest sorting by, 
and you can choose from a whole bunch of upfront prices. So let's say you want uh, from AWS for 36 months, you're going to be paying $51. This is what I have currently right now. So for three years, it's going to be $51, which comes out to around like $1.46 a month. Just get this, add it to your cart, purchase it. That's all you have to do. So after you purchase this reserved instance, you just run the t3.nano. Um, make sure you specify that you're going to be doing a t3.nano right here. And then all you have to do is launch the t3.nano instance and you won't be paying for it since you already paid for it all up front. Continuing on with launching our instance here, you're going to want to create a new key pair and enter a key pair name. Go ahead and select RSA or leave that selected. And then I'm going to choose PPK because I'm going to be using PuTTY. Then go ahead and click create key pair. Save the PPK file to somewhere you'll be able to retrieve it later. We're going to need to configure the security groups or the firewall next. So go ahead and do select existing security group and then open up a brand new window and go ahead and scroll down to security groups on the left here. At the top right, go ahead and click on create security group. We're going to call this Mr. Medicom code YouTube and you can put whatever you want for the description. Go ahead and leave outbound rules exactly the way it is and then you're going to want to add an inbound rule. So click add bull right here. Go ahead and type in 25565 in the port range and then under source we're going to want to do from everything. I'm going to add a description to this just so I know what it is. I'm going to call this Minecraft Java. Go ahead and add another rule where it says custom TCP, go ahead and select that drop down and then click SSH. For this, we're gonna do zero again because we want it to come in from anywhere. This is gonna allow us to connect via SSH with PuTTY to the instance that we're creating so we can configure it afterwards. If you're only catering to Java players, this is all you need to do. If you're catering to, Gai I'm sorry, Bedrock players as well with the Geyser Floodgate plugins, then you're gonna wanna add another role. Where it says custom TCP, go ahead and select custom UDP. The port range for this one is gonna be 19132, and then we're gonna to wanna to select it from anywhere again. I'm gonna add another description to this. We're gonna call it Minecraft Bedrock. And this is all you're gonna to need to do for the security group. So go ahead and scroll all the way down, and then on the bottom right, hit Create Security Group. Now that we have created our security group, go ahead and go back to the Launch an Instance page that we were setting up. Make sure it's Select Existing Security Group. Go ahead and hit the Refresh button right here. And then we're gonna select the security group that we just made. Since this instance is only going to be acting as a proxy and isn't going to be storing any actual data and it's only going to be forwarding network traffic, you can put the lowest storage as, uh, that's possible, which I think is 8 gigabytes. All right, that's it for setting up the instance. Instance, go ahead and hit launch instance on the bottom right here. After a second, it'll say it's successfully launched. Go ahead and click this, or you can just go to the thing on the left here and then hit instances and it'll be right here. You'll see that it has the name that we gave it. Go ahead and select the instance ID. As another disclaimer, all this is going to be deleted by the time this video is posted, so I'm not actually displaying anything. In real life, you're obviously not going to want to show anyone any of these um, IP addresses. You're not going to want to show them your private IP address in case you're new to this. All right, what you're going to want to do next is download PuTTY. Go ahead and hit download on this page. I already have it installed, but I trust you guys can walk through the installer. It's pretty simple. Just hit a whole bunch of next buttons. Once you have PuTTY installed, go ahead and open it up. Back to our AWS instance we created and copy this public IPv4 DNS. So go ahead and hit the copy button right here. Go back to PuTTY and then right here where it says host name or IP address, you're going to want to type Ubuntu at and then paste the public IPv4 DNS we just copied. Your host name should look something like this. It's just Ubuntu at and then the rest of this. On the left here inside of PuTTY, under SSH, go ahead and open up Auth and then Credentials. Go ahead and select that. Where it says Private Key File for Authentication, go ahead and hit Browse and select the PPK file that you saved earlier. So for me, it's going to be this Mr. Medicom Code YouTube.ppk. Now that we have that in there, go ahead and go back to session on the top left. I like to save my sessions in case you come back so you don't have to manually enter all of this information again. Once you give it a name, hit save, and it'll go in this list down here. See, we have, if I can get to it, Mr. Medicom YouTube tutorial. Now, whenever you open up PuTTY, all you have to do is double click this, which you shouldn't have to. This is a kind of a set and forget thing, but in case you overdo, it's much easier so you don't have to enter all of this again. Once you've saved that, go ahead and hit open or double click on the name. 
It's going to give you a security alert, just hit accept. Alright, so once we have successfully connected to our EC2 instance, the first thing you want to do is run updates. I'm going to type in sudo apt update, two and symbols, and sudo apt upgrade dash y, and then hit enter. It's going to run through a whole bunch of updates, just give it a little while and then we'll come back. Just hit OK. Hit enter one more time, and then we're going to type in sudo reboot. As soon as you enter that command, you should see something like this. Just hit OK, and then close this. So, since we conveniently saved all of that information in PuTTY, just open up PuTTY again, double click on this, and then we're back in. Here are the commands that you're going to need to run. Um, it's really just these two, and then this is where you're going to paste into a configuration file. I'll have this in the video description. So, go ahead and copy this one and then hit paste. In order to paste within PuTTY, just move your cursor over the window and then right click and then just hit enter. It's going to ask you if you want to continue, hit the Y button and then hit enter. Next thing you're going to do is copy this command here. Remember control C, go ahead and select this window by left clicking and then just right click and it'll paste the command. Hit enter and then it'll open up this. Once you're in this file, use the down arrow to scroll all the way down to the bottom. You're going to want to copy your public home IP address one more time and then paste it into these instructions here where it says your home public IP. Once you've done that, go ahead and copy everything from stream to the last curly brace. You're going to go back to PuTTY. We are going to right click within this window and that's going to paste everything within here. Hold the control button and hit X. It's going to ask you if you want to save, hit Y and then enter. Just to make sure everything has been applied properly, we're going to give it one more reboot. I probably should have done this first, and that's my fault, but the last thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and go to Instances, and then click on the Instance ID for the one we created. Click on the public IPv4 address and go ahead and copy that. Go back to freedns.afraid.org under Subdomains, and then go ahead and click on the one we created earlier. For the destination, you're now going to want to paste in the IPv4 we just copied from our AWS instance we set up, and then you're going to want to hit Save. Now if we just ping the subdomain that we just created again, you'll see that it lists the AWS IP address instead of your private, or sorry, technically public home IP address that you want to keep private. Uh, keep in mind it might take a while to update if it still shows your previous IP address, or honestly you could just do this step last. Uh, free DNS does take, uh, it took like 15 minutes for this to update for me. That's pretty much it. The last thing I do want to show you guys, however, is you will get a new IP address, um, I think once in a while, if you restart your AWS instance. If you don't want to have to deal with going to FreeDNS and updating whatever IP address that AWS gives you again, what you can do is you can scroll down in EC2 here and go to Elastic IPs. Go ahead and select Allocate Elastic IP Address at the top right. Leave this as all of the default selections and then hit Allocate. It's going to give you an allocated IPv4 address. Make sure it's selected and then hit Actions and Associate Elastic IP Address. We're going to be associating this to the instance we just created. So go ahead and select the one that is currently running. And then for private IP address, just choose the only one available. Go ahead and hit associate on the bottom right. And now you're all set. So if we go back to instances and then instance ID, you'll see that this got a new public IPv4 address. So you will have to update your free DNS with this new one, but after that it won't change. You also want to update your putty saved um, configuration, which I'll show you how to do that here. If you just select it, hit load, and then replace the this part right here, but just by copying that, and then hit save again. That's all you gotta do. So once you double click on it now, and then hit accept one more time, and you're back in. That's it guys, I just wanted to share this with you since it is a very cheap way to have public IP address from your home network if you're doing self-hosting, to keep that private so that you can give your subdomain like, you know, mrmedicomco.us.to out to all of your players and they're never going to see your actual home IP address. Let me know what you think, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, if I missed anything let me know.